Today we're going to round out the series on the Mocha Pot with a look at the Mocha Pot variations. How have they improved on it, adapted it, improvised on it? Have they made a better Mocha Pot? As we've gone through this series, lots of you have left comments saying, yo, you have to look at this pot or that pot. And so I grabbed a few of them and we're going to take a look. It's going to be a little bit of fun and I hope kind of interesting too. Let me talk you through briefly what we have on the menu for today. First up, probably the most highly requested is the Bialetti Bricker little pressure valve inside that one, which is interesting. Next up will be the Mucca. Uh, it makes milk drinks. We're going to make a cappuccino all in one pot. I don't know what I expect. We've got the Cuore di Mocha. Super interesting little pot. They don't make this anymore, and so you can only really get them secondhand. Difficult to track down, but lots of you asked about this, so we're going to brew some coffee with that. And then in the end, you're not going to want to miss this one, is the Chimera an interesting little adaptation of the mocha pot idea. Let's brew some coffee. So first up is the bricker, probably the most requested thing to sort of talk about. And what makes it different from a normal mocha pot is actually in the top part here. If you get the gasket out and then your filter just drops out, you can sort of see in here something's going on. So actually it turns out if you take the top apart, the interesting part is inside. There's a little rubber valve. And this is it. This little mouth is the only thing in the way of the coffee. So it'll prevent the liquid flowing through until it reaches a certain pressure and then it'll be forced open. You should get a foamier cup by creating some additional pressure with this thing. Let's see if that's true. Let's get it onto the heat. This does have a little cutout so you can sort of see what's going on with your brew. Now the interesting thing to me Actually, let me get the cutaway mocha pot to explain this. So the interesting thing about this is if you restrict the coffee flow here, water's going to boil down here. It's going to push the water up through the coffee. It'll go through the filter up to here and then get stuck. And so some water will have passed through the coffee. Some water will be sort of in the coffee and you'll reach a point of st sort of static flow. It won't move anymore. It'll just sort of stall there while it builds pressure as the water gets hotter and hotter and hotter in the base. Now you might get some boiling liquid, which will create foam, a less stable foam than CO2 coming out of solution as is traditional with crema. But, but I don't really know if this is going to make a better tasting brew or just a foamier brew. We'll find out. All right, buddy. Definitely getting foam. I've just got a really, really hot pot there. You're just coming off the heat. You're coming off the heat. We are angry. I'm taking you to the sink to run under a cold tap. This has just come straight back. This is is a 100% Arabica specialty coffee, not super dark roasted, so it's not going to be that thick and foamy. I do wonder if it would be happier with something designed to have a thicker layer of crema, a darker roast, or maybe something with a robusta in there. I don't know, but but we have retained no foam. But how is the drink? Ooh, that's a lot. That's like a lot, a lot of attack. I feel like this roast is probably too light for this kind of a pot. There's quite a lot of acidity, a lot of concentration. Are you just a, do you want to be quiet? I'll see if a cold tap helps shut you up. Anyway, I, I would say this brew is super intense. It's too acidic. It's not actually super bitter. It tastes pretty extracted, but just like a lot. The question I have is what's actually happening in here. Now, I think Hopefully, the, the, the sort of the, the base from the Franken mocker that has all the pressure information on it, I think it will fit the threading of the top part of this with the valve in it. So if we run the Franken mocker base, we should be able to see at what pressure the valve opens in the bricker. Now we're not going to measure temperature, just pressure today, hopefully. So this is tracking the pressure inside the unit. And this transducer connected to this thing here. So we can see right now we're at 0 0.03 bars of pressure. 0.2. Now in, in a lot of testing we did, coffee began to flow through a normal mocha at about 0.3 bars. Changed the coffee out for something more traditional. Uh, I'm not going to say what. Oh, that was it. A bar. A bar. But interestingly, we're still climbing in terms of pressure. Rapidly. Cut the heat. We're at 1.5 bars. Oh, that's very near. All right, all right. Shh, 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 
Come on, man. Come on, man. I'm angry. He's coming out of the top. Ah. It would have been smart to remember that I used a larger base than the top section. And so unsurprisingly, I ran out of room in the top part. And that was uh, terrifying, to be honest. So that, that happened. Where do we peak? 1.79 bars. Oh yes, that is more traditional. Oh, that is a strong cup of coffee. That feels intense. Not my favorite, darker roasted for sure. Much more intensity. The top chamber gets very foamy uh, in this situation, um, but you don't get any foam in the cup. It just sort of sits back from the edge when you pour. So no foam for you. So the bricker was surprising to me. I, I thought you'd see a more obvious release of pressure when the valve opened at about a bar, but you didn't really see that. And it seemed to be just above one bar of pressure, which seems uh, notable, but not shocking. Like I said, in most brews, it'd be about 0.3 to start getting liquid was all you needed. So holding it back to one, it just seemed really angry. Hotter, certainly, than a normal pot. Yeah, you get a lot of foam. I, I'm not sure that's to the massive benefit of the cup. I think with more traditional roast, it might be okay, but I would definitely want to stop this as soon as it got to sputtering because it, it was getting really angry uh, and cooling it down there will definitely reduce the bitterness. But interesting as an innovation, but I don't think transformative in the cup. So next up is the Bialetti Mocha, the one that's supposed to do a cappuccino or cafe latte, uh, all in one, all in one. Now, if you look at the front of the box, this promise looks quite appetizing. Nice layer of foam, bit of a kind of latte macchiato vibes. But if you open the, the, the box up, the instructions offer something else. I don't know, it's kind of weird. This has the click clack, as they call it, which is like a bayonet style, portafilter style locking thing, so no threading. Now, look at this, look at this, look, this is, why is this not normal? Because if there's one thing about the mocha pot that's just awful, it's getting this out, especially after you use it. So, so like the little thing, oh, it's all wonky. Oh, it's squishy. Why is it squishy? You're supposed to fill it to that level and then when you put it in, it'd be compressed. So it comes with a nice guide that tells you how much water to put in, depending if you're using gas or an electric plate, which I think is super interesting. So I'm gonna use the, uh, the, the gas water fill level. I'm gonna go cold water. That is not much. I guess we're trying to make a lot of steam. So coffee, let's go tra traditional again. So there, there it is. I guess we put it in. We lock it together. Click, clack. And uh, it says press for cappuccino because it's got like two positions up and a down. It's going to go down and then uh, we'll put it on the flame directly. It does say you want the flame to be no wider than the base, but it's a pretty wide base. So let's see what happens. Oh, milk, milk. So we're going to put milk or milk alternative in until the fill level inside here, and it's gonna do the steamy foamy thing, I think. Now, I, I can't see what's happening. I've never used this before. I've got my heat source right. It says seven, step seven, your drink is ready. When you hear the characteristic puff of the Mucca Express, wait for the coffee to come up. Wait a few seconds and then switch the heat off and remove the product. Enjoy your cappuccino. I mean, that's gonna be making a lot of air pressure, like there's a lot of air in that chamber to expand that would push liquid up at a relatively low temperature. But I guess you've got such a wide base and a thin layer of water, that's gonna get hot quickly too. Really interesting. That was the characteristic puff, I suppose. It, ooh! I guess we'll have a little swirl. I'm presuming there's coffee in here two. Oh yeah. That's a, do I need to lift the lid to get foam? Come on. Give me that foam. I think I removed the product too soon because that's like 30 degrees Celsius. I think it needs more time to be angry. This is probably really stupid, but they sounded like there was a bit of an explosion inside the, the mucker, but the lid is not dirty which says to me that we could totally film it lid open. So let's film it lid open. Please don't complain that I haven't ironed my lab coat. Okay, safety first kids. So it looks like a little coffee flavor is coming up. 
I'm just getting nervous now. Oh. Oh, yeah. Look at that. I should stop there. No, I shouldn't, because it was cold last time. Give me more. That is unexpected. And frankly, fantastic. All right, let's get a, let's have a taste. That classic 1990s steam milk technique. Mmm. Still not that hot. I would probably recommend another way of heating and, and, and steaming or firming milk, to be honest. I think a microwave and like a French press, like up down technique is probably superior to this, if I'm honest. If you've got one of the little Aero Latte type whisks, something like those would be better than this. It's fun. It's just not very good at steaming milk in an interesting way that makes it hot enough. And that's all I have to say about that. So next up, this one, I'm kind of excited about this one. They don't make them new anymore, it seems, but you can still pick them up on eBay and places like that. It's called the Quarter de Mocha. Uh, the heart of the Mocha, I guess, there's a little heart symbol here. And then inside this, and it is used, so don't judge me, it's, I, didn't, I didn't do this to it. Inside, you can see there's a little heart here attached to a float, right? So this, depending on the liquid level in the top chamber, would move up. And that's the innovation here, right? Like. Essentially, rather than you having to go and run it under the tap or do other stuff like that, this will just cut off the whole brewer at a certain level. You would never over extract it, I guess. And so you just get the heart, I guess. Is that what they mean? Like a, almost like the heart of an artichoke, like the heart of the mocha. Anyway, what we'll do is we'll brew with this. Now, this was a collaboration, I understand it, between uh, Bialetti and Ili Cafe. And so, uh, whoops. And so it only seems right to brew an appropriate coffee. Fred, whole bean, whole bean, because, you know, we're going to do this right. Oh, yes. That gas flash goodness. Let's, uh, let's, let's grind some illy. This is a one cup. I'm going to get about six grams of coffee in here, I reckon. We're going to get about 60 grams of liquid in this, in the base. But how much will we get out before the Quo de Mocha says no? So they said a medium flame. A medium flame it will be. So we'll, we'll see what happens. It does also say that if you leave it to heat, then the valve is probably going to open and be careful and don't burn yourself. Because once you trap it, once you close the top section, if you keep increasing the pressure through temperature, the only way to get steam or pressure out is through the emergency relief valve, through the pressure relief valve. Oh, we have coffee. Curious how much liquid we'll get before the float lifts. Is that it? very subtle. I thought there'd be more of an obvious kind of lift, but no, it's it's pretty minimal. All right. I'm curious how much liquid we actually got out of this thing. So let's weigh and find out. 28 grams. All right. Cheers. It's a pretty good brew. That coffee's roasted in such a way that it's pretty soluble. Cutting it off at that point hasn't led to massive under extraction. It's quite a nicely textured cup. This definitely would not work well for lighter roasts. There's just no way I think you'd get enough water through to properly extract the coffee unless you're using a super fine grind and I think you'd have some trouble there. But overall, I'm kind of pleasantly surprised by it. Uh, I think for that style of coffee, it works really well. I like the automation of it. I like not having to pay attention or worry too much, but I don't think it's a better brewer because I think losing that flexibility isn't a good thing. I can brew exactly this with a regular mocha if I stop it at the right time. So I can brew that kind of shorter ristretto style mocha, I guess, if I want to, or I can brew something a little bit longer and more extracted if I want to. So for me, it's an interesting little idea. It's an interesting little innovation, but I don't think it's made a better brewer. If you just like this style of coffee, more developed roasts, shorter cups, well, maybe track one down. But, but I would say it's probably not worth swapping out a mocha you already own for, for one of these. Now, before we get into this thing, which might be my favorite in a way of today's brewers, well, there's a short ad for this video's sponsor, which is Squarespace. If you need a website or a domain, then I would recommend checking out Squarespace. I've been using Squarespace for years now, and I'll tell you why. It makes taking an idea in my head and turning it into a live website that's beautiful and accessible by anyone anywhere in the world 
super easy. You start with your idea and maybe pick up a domain to go with it and then sign up for a free trial and just start building the website. It's so easy to take one of their templates and it could be something you're trying to build for a cafe you own, it could be a portfolio of your work, it could be something totally different. But there'll be a suitable template that you can start from filled with your words, your images, and very soon you'll have a website that looks stunning on every browser, on every device, and there's nothing to worry about, nothing to patch, upgrade, or install. It's just easy. But don't take my word for it. Sign up for a free trial down below and build something, create something, see how easy it is. And when you're ready to launch, use code James Hoffman for 10% off any website or domain. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So this is the Chimera. I've had this in the studio a couple of years and I just haven't had a chance to get it out and get it on video. So I'm excited that it has made it into today's lineup. This came to my attention via one of its promotional videos, which is interesting. And honestly, I didn't know coffee could or was supposed to look like that. But they established an early coffee and hair connection, which I fully endorse. Nothing about this makes a ton of sense, but I love it nonetheless. Let's walk through how you brew with this thing, because it's kind of fun. You've got your reservoir fill here, right? So this is a little tank, you fill this up, and then in order to get the water into the brewer, you have to open this valve. This then allows water down into the bottom section, which is the boiler, basically. You then close your valve so that when you start to heat it, obviously no pressure can escape here, which is going to drive hot water up this tube, round and down, and then into the little kind of porta filter thing here. This, oh, well, this is just kind of weird, right? You fill this with coffee, even though the bottom of it has this little tiny filtration section in it that I don't necessarily understand or think is that good of a thing that leads to a little tiny spout out of which your very strange frothy coffee comes. Let me just make some coffee, it'll make more sense. I will say that I've had some issues with it because when I put water in here and open the valve, it's like an airlock has happened and until I kind of wobble and shake the brewer, I can't get the water to go down into the boiler. Someone in the comments will tell me why that is and why I can't get it right, uh, but I honestly don't know right now. It just won't drain. All right, I think we've got the water in. In what is, I think, easily the most gloriously insane decision in this brewer, this goes on the heat. And actually you're gonna put your cup on top of the boiler. The thing that's gonna to get to like 120 degrees Celsius, you're gonna put your cup there. So I guess preheated cups is a win. So for coffee, we're gonna go something very traditional, something with some robusta in it, honestly, because I wanna see what happens to the kind of crema, the foam. This thing promises a very specific texture. So I have some uh, Lavazza Crema y Gusto. Um, cream and taste. This is, I'm not trying to be disparaging about Lavazza, I'm not saying this is right or wrong, I just wanted something more traditional uh, to go with this, honestly. So we, we fill the portafilter, but we don't tamp. Oh, we in? Look at this. Look at that. I should probably stop it brewing, but I, I just, I'm looking at it coming. <laughs> Look at that. Look at it go. Oh, it's the best. Discharge pressure. Okay. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Look at that. That is the weirdest foam. That's so good. Honestly, it's, it's not a bad brewer. Like, um, this is a darkly roasted coffee, relatively high and robusta. It doesn't taste over extracted necessarily. It's, it's pretty harsh still. Like, I think it has a very traditional classic kind of darker roasted, high robusta bitterness that's, that's there. It's not super hot, actually. This seems to brew that little bit cooler, which is interesting. But, but the foam, how good is that? I honestly think it's kind of fun. I don't think it's a very practical brewer at all. Uh, and, and I think having the cup on the hot thing is is not good. But I think it brews in this really bizarre but interesting way and the whole foam thing, delightful. Bizarre, delightful. Would probably stick with a mocha pot that I, I've never had a brewer that made me coffee that looked like that. So make of that what you will. I think it's fun. I think it's fun. It's okay to have fun. And this is fun. Cheers. This. I don't keep. None of the brewers today I'm gonna to keep. In fact, none of the mockers that we've used in this whole series are, am I gonna keep. 
with one exception. I keep a, a Franken mocker for myself. One is being raffled. This may still be time to enter that and, and pick up a ticket for that raffle and win one of those things. But the rest will be going to my Patreon supporters. They give me the budget to go out and, and buy these things, test them, learn this stuff, and share it with you. So thank you to them. But now I'd like to hear from you down in the comments below. What brewer should we have included? Now I didn't include the kind of competition filter that I think you can get for mocha pots. I thought that's kind of different to uh, kind of mocha derived brewers. That's like an add-on for mocha brewing. But if there's other things like that I should look at, definitely let me know. If anyone's doing any precision baskets, let me know about that. If anyone's doing any really interesting brewers, leave me a comment down below. I'll have a look, I'll check it out. Maybe it'll turn up on the channel soon. But for now, I'll say thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.